Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Kelly O. In this video, I'll be interviewing one of my good friends and fellow Las Vegas showgirl, Erin Curdy. Erin has had a really incredible career. She's danced for the Detroit Pistons, Holland America Cruise Line as a dancer, and of course has danced here in Las Vegas. I'm gonna be interviewing Erin today to give you another perspective on what it is to be a Las Vegas showgirl, because I know a lot of you are really curious and have a, have a lot of interest in that. I feel like I've already told my story and you know i'm obviously not performing right now the strip is shut down and there's not anything i can vlog or or show you guys so i thought why not interview some of my friends and give their perspective and maybe add to the dialogue of this whole las vegas showgirl thing so without further ado let's get to my interview with erin curdy hi erin hi kelly how's it going good thanks for coming on my channel i really appreciate it Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm flattered. <laughs> uh, and I wish that I could do this in person, but since it's quarantine, we'll do it like this. So I'm just going to get right to it. I just wanted to ask you some questions for my viewers that are interested in Las Vegas showgirls and our lives and what's going on. So first and foremost, um, what was your dance training? How did you get started as a dancer? I was a little bit older compared to some other people. I started dancing at the age of nine. Um, so, so, so my dismay my parents were divorced and so neither of my parents were able to take me to the baby classes that happened right after school. So I had to wait until, you know, a 5.30, 6 o'clock class came along and so I was late to the game, but I loved it. I feel like it, you know, I wanted it so bad when I was little, instead of getting bored with it, it just kind of was like, oh my gosh, let me emerge myself in this to get better. So you loved it. I did. It what was, was your favorite dance style? What did you study the most? Uh, I would say like back in the day it was jazz, you know, that was always the most fun, but definitely now as I've gotten older, you know, ballet is just, it's just that staple that everybody needs to be good at any style. You know, it takes a lot of control to be out of control with your body when you're doing hip hop or contemporary or whatever the case may be. So I definitely came to appreciate ballet the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but a really I strong know. classical jazz training is almost just as good, I think. And I would argue that if you get too good at ballet, you will never be good at hip hop. <laughs> Touché, touché. Like no, this. I think you're good at it though. I know you give yourself no, I'm terrible. Time. And I was I was never that good at ballet and I'm terrible at hip hop, but I can think of like some prima ballerinas that I follow on Instagram and when they try to be like hip, it's it's adorable but not not accurate. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway, so you um got really passionate about dance and then what did that look like for you after high school? You went straight to college and kept dancing. How did that work for you? I continued dancing at studio one year um, after high school. And then um, in conjunction with all of that, I was dancing in the WNBA when I was a teenager. Wow. Uh, we had a team, the Detroit Shock. Um, it's not around anymore, but then that kind of transitioned um, into dancing into the NBA. As I grew older, I was able to start dancing for the Pistons. So my training kind of stopped, but jobs were coming in, even though, you know, Michigan isn't really quite the entertainment capital of the world. All we have are sports and they did really want to give our fans a great game day experience because we're not really good at our sports either. <laughs> But, I don't know anything so, about sports, not to take your word for that. But, but yeah, so they really wanted to, the, the NBA, the Pistons organization, really wanted to, you know, give a first class overall emerging kind of game day experience. So, you know, we had dancers, we had announcers, we had the mascot, we had the team, we had cheerleaders, we had a dunk team, anything that you could think of, uh, you know, we really did a good job, I think, with throwing out kind of that entertainment aspect, even though that's not our forte as Detroiters, but it was I a lot of fun. It's not. So you started as a teenager. That's amazing. How old were you? I was 13 when I got oh my, my first. <laughs> 13? 13. Wow. Yeah, it was a co-ed team. Co team with boys and girls, and we were all teenagers, and it, it was the first time I had ever really danced with boys too. So that was interesting, you know, to partner and to 
let go of my control. Oh, I'm so sorry, my phone. That's okay. Especially at 13, that must have been so awkward. <laughs> I, was, I was always tall and bigger, so it was like to try to partner with boys, it was like, oh, God. 13, wow, that's so young. So then how old were you when you started dancing for the Pistons? I uh, love what 19, 18 or 19 when I started dancing for them. And then I, I was actually at the venue where all of the sports teams were. It was called the Palace of Auburn Hills. Rest in peace. They've torn it down now um, for a span of 10 years. So I started when I was 13, ended when I was 23 with the Pistons. So it was a really cool experience. So you did it for quite a while. And I'm assuming you got to attend lots of N NBA functions and meet lots of famous basketball players. And what was that like? Yes, I actually, I was spoiled in 2007. The All-Star All -Star game was out here in Las Vegas and um, one girl was picked from each NBA team and I got to go out to represent the Detroit Pistons. So you were picked, that that's awesome. <laughs> How many was, girls were you picked out of? So, our team picked who was going to be the nominees. So there was three girls um, from my team and they, the NBA put up our photographs and our little bios um, about us. And then America got to vote who got to go and they picked me. So uh -huh. I think that year they actually got more votes for the cheerleaders than they did for the players. Like the, the America has to pick out which players they want to see at that all-star game too and we got more traffic online than the actual players did which was pretty cool <laughs> you better to look at that is awesome i did not know that about you and that's really cool yes that was a really fun experience but yeah a lot of cool a lot of cool things and uh, our nfl team just got cheerleaders like recently so back in my day if ever the lions or you know the nfl wanted some kind of you know brand ambassador some kind of you know womenly kind of face for our city they would hire the Pistons girls so you got to do the Lions them. too yeah so that was really cool that's like you have a whole day about fantasy <laughs> 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 yep um and so then from from the Pistons is that when you went to dance for Holland America immediately after that or no, so I went to college for four years and got my bachelor's in communication. And then right after, um, I got a job at an internet sweepstakes company in finance and, you know, type it away, doing the nine to five thing. I really liked it. It was a really, really great company. Um, very lenient. As long as your work got done and you showed your results, nobody was micromanaging you. And, you know, you took care of yourself and they took care of you if you took care of them. So really great company. but. Um, it's dating me, the recession hit, and it was one of those things where I was working, everyone was getting laid off, and I was working so hard because I'm getting more of their work piled onto my workload, and I just so had happened to head up to audition for Holland America Line to dance on ships, and I got the call, and I was like, oh gosh, I want to get out of this. I'm working 12-hour days when I'm in my 20s. I'm at a desk, even though I really loved it, it was like, ugh, goodbye, I'm off to see the world. <laughs> I'm so. assuming you took a pay cut to do that. I did it and I did it. I, I definitely wasn't making that much money. I was entry level when I started with the company. And so it kind of was comparable. And when you really wow. think, about, yeah, you, when you really, it, it was during the recession. So people were getting laid off. People were getting their pay cut slashed. People, the perks, the, you know, matching your 401k and, and you know all of those things not a thing anymore so by the time i left it was a pretty comparable maybe even a little bit more money to go on ships so i was happy <laughs> That's awesome. but yes in the grand scheme of things ships are a little you know you take a pay cut but the workload is like nothing either so it's not so bad. And you're, you know, you're not paying for your lodging. You're not paying, you know, rent. You're not paying for your food. You're not paying for any of your travel and you get to see the entire, well, I was blessed enough to see the entire world and you know, at somebody else's dime and I got paid to do it. So it's a, it's a really great way to save your money. Awesome. I've only been able to work on a ship as a dancer for a month at a time. I've never done a long uh, contract like that and I was always really curious what it was like so what was your longest contract your longest time at sea 
and where were your favorite ports? Uh, you're lucky you only have to do one month on, one month off, I'm jealous. Um, my longest stint, I want to say was nine months or 10 months. So like, it, it was almost a year. It was pretty grueling. And not to say I didn't love ship life, I, I kept going back, but that's a long time to be away from, you know, your family and your friends. And even just to have your two feet on solid ground, it's, you know, I called it my little floating prison. <laughs> but at the same time, it was wonderful. I would never, you know, change a thing about it. But some of my favorite ports, I did a Bermuda run for an entire summer. It was New York to Bermuda, New York to Bermuda. And it was insane. And a lot of people are like, oh, you, you know, would you get island fever? It's such a tiny little place. And um, absolutely not. If there's sunshine and, a, you know, pina colada, I'll be happy. <laughs> so I loved Bermuda. I loved Barcelona. There is just so many cool I did that same Bermuda run actually. Where'd you get to go? That one. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, I, I mean, only for a few, maybe two or three times, I think. But yeah, I was, I love Bermuda. But I'm, I'm, I doubt I got to see as much of it as you did because I was only there, you know. You probably saw a good chunk. <laughs> anyway, okay, so cruising was great and you did that for a few years. Yeah, roughly four, five ish years. It's just it's on and off. So, you know, I go for the nine months and then stay home for anywhere from three to five months. Um, and then I go back out and then come home again for, you know, another three to six months, whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, it was like a five year period. And then I came back home to Detroit and I worked for the Detroit Tigers for a little bit on their, um, their dance team. They're more of like a, a spirit team, an energy team. They're called the, um, oh gosh, my, my, my head, it blanked out. They're called the energy squad. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. It was the Detroit Tigers energy squad. I got to coach them. And I, I realized in that moment, though, it was like, gosh, I still want to perform. I still want to dance. And I'm not going to be able to do that if I stay here in Michigan. So I was like, well, once this season is over, I'm going to head out to the bright lights of Sin City and see what happens. And yes. <laughs> here I am today. And that's when we met. And I met you, I believe, at Fantasy when we were working as swings there. Is that right? Yeah. We met at Foundation yeah. Room. I can't remember. I, we, we met at Foundation Room. I didn't get to dance at Foundation Room continuously like you did. So, yeah, I feel like we really met during Fantasy. Or yeah. Yes. It's where we got to bond. That was a lot of fun. Okay, so why did you pick Las Vegas? Las Vegas, it's just, you know, the entertainment capital of the world. And on top of it, I'm not a, a very good singer. So <laughs> I feel like in New York, you definitely have to be that triple threat that, you know, sing, act, dance. You really don't want to hear my voice. I've never really had any vocal training. So, and not that I couldn't learn, but, you know, it was, I feel like Vegas was a more, more lucrative to pick in LA not that I don't love LA it's just it's never been my thing out there even though we're on the west coast I do like the west coast and the weather but um again I feel like a lot of people are out there you know actors dancers everyone's a dime a dozen and it's just a little bit more competitive and not to say that Vegas isn't because it definitely is but I just thought I'd have a better chance out here and I mean it's fun you know <laughs> Yeah, I've mentioned this so, in some of my okay. other videos, but we do have a much easier lifestyle out here from, yes. I mean, you hear about these gigs in LA where they're doing like four or five go-go sets for a hundred dollars and things that Vegas dancers just wouldn't, we just wouldn't do that. <laughs> we would just yeah. not take that gig, but we also don't have, you know, $2,000 a month rent, you know, so it's just, exactly. it's a different market out there. But. The cost of living is, yes, just ridiculous compared to any big city we have a very very lucky so so how long have you been in Vegas now six years six years and are you planning to stay what are what are your goals for Las Vegas and 
well, before the quarantine, I was searching for a house to stay pretty permanently. I mean, at any point, you know, you can sell a house, rent it out, whatever. But um, yeah, I wanted to purchase out here and now I'm kind of taking a little hiatus, but I would love to stay here for a good chunk of time. Um, I don't know if it'll be from my forever home, but I yeah, never say never. Who knows? I'm kind of just up in the air. <laughs> yeah. I thought I had it all planned out and then, you know, Corona decided to make Maybe it We all feel that way. <laughs> so no worries there. Um, great. And then are you, okay, this is my last question. Okay. Last question. What advice do you have for any aspiring dancers or specifically dancers that want to move to Las Vegas or specifically want to be a showgirl, Las Vegas showgirl? Well, I mean, to be a showgirl specifically, I would just say be really kind to one another. And when you go out on these auditions, meet people, smile. I mean, I know it's, I feel like Vegas is a pretty, our community of dancers is a very, very nice and genuine group and so you know just kind of check that ego and that diva at the door and just have a fun time when you go on auditions or you know meet casting directors or when you go to these agencies to get work just you know eat your slice of humble pie and have fun oh that's such good advice <laughs> yeah I think maybe people do think that it's like showgirls the movie and everybody's really catty and backstabbing and you know, there's always some bad, bad apples in every bunch, but I would agree that it's a really nice community that we have here. So I think that's great. Really advice. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Erin, so much. Um, everyone, if you're interested, you can follow Erin on Instagram and I'll be putting her, her Instagram handle in the description box below. And I'm sure you can reach her there if you have any other questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm actually planning to do a series of these. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. Maybe interview with a showgirl, showgirl diaries. What do you think, Erin? Showgirl. Something. Ooh, I like showgirl diaries. Showgirl diaries. Okay. I like that too. Maybe I'll do a poll. Thank you. We're done. You don't, you don't have to, let me stop this. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Erin. This is the first in a series I'm going to be doing. I figured I have so many showgirl friends and interesting friends here in Las Vegas, why not interview them? Hopefully this quarantine will be over soon and I can actually interview them in person. The other thing I wanted to let you know is that you will be able to submit questions for me to ask my future guests. So if you'd like to do that, head over to my Facebook page. It's linked in the description below. Go ahead and like, and keep an eye out for my future posts with the different guests I will be interviewing. You'll be able to comment on the post, any questions that you have, and then I will include them in my interview with my guests. So that's just another way you guys can get involved. That's something I would normally post on a YouTube community board, but I believe you have to have a thousand or 10,000 subscribers or something like that before you can do that. I don't qualify for that yet. So I'll be doing all of that on my Facebook page. If you're interested, you can go over there. And of course, if you'd like to follow Erin on social media, I'm gonna put her Instagram link in the description box below so you can do that. If you guys enjoyed this video, it really helps my channel if you give a thumbs up comment, share, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video.